Hello, hello everyone. It's Maddie with Spectrum Art Creations. And today we are continuing the art panel challenge. We hope you will join the challenge and create along and maybe gather some ideas and inspirations along the way. If you are new to the challenge, not to worry. It's super simple. Every month we give you a theme and maybe some prompts and you create either a four by six or a five by seven panel, any which way you like. Just be sure you use the hashtag so that we can find your posts and of course follow you as well. I've placed more info on the challenge and how to participate and the links to the previous themes in the description box down below. So if you need more info, check those out. Or if you want further inspiration and other challenges, look at those uh, links as well. But let's jump right in because this month's challenge is bingo cards. Very simple. I was super excited that Bernie, uh, who is my husband, I let him pick uh, whatever he wants for the challenge because that way it keeps it fair. I know what themes I like, so by him picking, it keeps me honest and it challenges me as well. So he said bingo cards and right away, I thought of this amazing collection which had some great bingo cards. This collection is by Simple Stories. It is called Simple Vintage Essentials. And that's why, because it's all about like the vintage essentials, those blacks, whites, tans, beige, grays, neutrals, very neutral colors. This is all I have left. I have used this pad for like seven different projects so far, but you can see it's got like letters and wallpapers and um, tickets, view masters, uh, oh gosh, all kinds of stuff. And then of course you have the, your uh, rub-ons and the rub-ons have text and numbers, just great. I mean, it's very neutral. It'll go with anything butterflies, dragonflies, and bees. I love those little tiny bees. Um, and you get two sheets. Uh, as you can see, I've used a lot of it as well. And the same thing goes for my chipboard die cuts. These are awesome. They have all kinds of like vintage looking metal placards and words and uh, drawer um, poles. And then of course you have this other pack, which has got tons of clipboards in different sizes. And then the little, um, top part of the clipboards too so you can add them to all kinds of projects and yes yeah, so i i've got a little bit left of the collection not that much we do still have it in store so if you are interested do know that we have it in store um i don't know how much of it is left but we i'm pretty sure we have a nice selection so take a look and don't wait because you don't want it to be retired and then when it's gone it's gone Okay, so I am going to cut out some of these bingo uh, cards. As you can see, uh, I don't have a full sheet because I've used a lot of it. We're gonna save that band up at the top because it's got some really cool stuff. On one side, it's got color. On the other side, it's got numbers. We can totally use that, right? Okay, now I have some full bingo cards, like that top row was full and the second half, not so much. It's like three quarters of bingo cards, but that's okay. And here I was just thinking, ooh, we can do all kinds of accordions with that too. So that would be cool. But for this project, we are going to need an individual bingo card or two or three. And the ones that are cut like, um, you know, two thirds of a bingo card, I can always use those behind, um, you know, other things. Cause you know, we don't need to see the full bingo card. We can always just kind of stagger them like that. See, and then all we see is the top. So it would be okay. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these all out until I can figure out what it is that we're gonna be doing. But I do know that I do want to, I don't know, play around with all the papers. Uh, I don't necessarily want to uh, stay, you know, like go anywhere outside of this um, collection because it's gorgeous. I'm gonna let this be the focal point for my mixed media art panel today. I am doing a five by seven panel using our Spectrum Art Creations um, decoupage and sealing glue in order to adhere two of these. Typically, I use either a canvas panel or um, I also love to use my Graphic 45 chipboard for this because it's kind of thick. But sometimes like this, I have like leftover cereal boxes. I think this was actually the back of a 12 by 12 pad. So it's, it's you know, it's thick, but not thick enough. So I'm going to adhere two of those together 
in order to give me a much nicer thickness uh, so then when I do all kinds of stuff to it it's not going to warp on me or be too flimsy and then of course I'm using my ergonomic bone folder in order to um, make sure that those two pieces are nice and adhered okay with that said we are going to move on to our next step which is going to be to start thinking of the layout so I am going to first gesso my page because I don't quite know yet what I'm gonna do with this if I'm gonna spray it painted um, I I'm not sure so whenever I'm not sure I start always by pre gessoing my page and in this case I am using uh, white gesso first to give it a nice base again not going super crazy with it but just you know adding some gesso just so that that paper doesn't get warped it is kind of like I said on the thinner side and I want to prep it so I want to have a nice great prepped substrate for my project um, in case you're wondering I just pour the gesso into our soft squeeze bottles because as you guys know, or most of you know, if you're new, you might not know, but I do struggle a lot with my hands. And in order to make that easier for me, I simply put it in our soft squeeze bottles, which also allows me to place the product exactly where I need it or in the quantity that I need it. So it's just easier to use all together. Okay, now, what shall we do? Well, I'm thinking that I'm going to gather some of these papers here, just some text. Uh, and again, you could use book pages if you wanted to, but these papers are so perfect because they have everything that I need. <laughs> so I think this is going to be where I'm going to stick. Uh, this is going to be my, my whole project right here. It's just going to be focused on this collection. It's got letters. It's got numbers. It's got butterflies. It's got view masters. It's got typewriters. It's got bingo cards. I mean, I really don't need much of anything past that. <laughs> to create a project so all that I'm doing is gathering up some of these um, papers cutting them down a little smaller and I'm gonna grab some of the other pages maybe mix and match you know some of the browns the polka dots the text just kind of gather um, some different colors to add some interest to my page or my project and again that was that strip that we had at the top that I said we were gonna save and use well there you go perfect for this project as well so let's gather up some papers and we will uh, start layering those up just adhering them with our sax glue and then we can kind of start figuring out from where we go from there Now that we have some papers that we can collage the smaller ones I am going to need some bigger ones in order to break up the background so for that what I'm doing is selecting some colors um, that are coordinating again this is one collection which makes it perfect because everything will coordinate it's already been done for us but um, I'm looking for different colors some grays some tans some whites, uh, some maybe um, something of interest like music notes, uh, that edge which is absolutely gorgeous because it's already been frayed, but I am going to um, you know, cut it out a little bit more as well. So again, trying to get that look of layering starting from the base up. And so this part of the process is just a matter of playing with your papers, uh, kind of moving them around, trying to see what looks good, what colors are uh, working well together, and with a little bit of forethought, because I do know that I am going to be doing a lot in the center. I want my focal point to be centered on this art panel. Now, 
because of that, I don't want to necessarily put anything that I really, really love or that might get covered fully in the center. With that said, remember, one of the things about mixed media is you have got to be willing to sacrifice bottom layers, if not fully, mostly, because that's the whole idea of layering is that we're going to keep adding and adding and collaging on top until we're probably not going to see a whole lot of this on the bottom. Some of it will peek through here and there, but not necessarily will we'll be able to recognize anything that I've put so far. So if you were to take a still photo of the paper or the art panel that I have right now on this first layer, and then look at the final project, the way that it works is you can never recognize anything that is on the bottom. Maybe little snippets here and there, tiny bits, uh, but for the most part, not really. So remember, part of mixed media is layering and so you're going to sacrifice that bottom layer almost most certainly 80 90 percent of it is going to not be visible which is why i went with larger patterns on the bottom uh, and larger pieces not so much trying to pierce together little tiny scraps of paper uh, and even if you do that's fine just remember you might not see a whole lot of it With that first layer done, now we're going to start adding those smaller bits. Start collaging uh, smaller pieces up on top. In this case, I had cut a lot of text and some measuring tapes. And so that's all that I'm doing is just kind of going around and adding them in different directions. You don't want everything facing either vertical or horizontal. You want to mix and match to break up the flow of the page. And then of course, we've got to bring in our bingo, right? Because the whole theme is bingo. So we're going to incorporate a bingo card, actually two, somewhere along on this art panel. Now, the other thing I wanted to um, point out is when you're doing your collaging, not only do you want to break it up vertically and horizontally, but you also want to add numbers, text, you want to add some lights, some darks, and some mediums. So the whole beauty of, of collaging and why it's so therapeutic, it's just you know playing around with papers and sticking them on, then adding something different, you know, in another direction and you know covering part of that up. Just so little bits peek out here and there. Again, remember, this is just the second um layer of this we're going to continue to layer on and add additional pieces so but of course we have to bring in our bingo cards so i think i'm going to use these two here of course remember the theme could be anything it, it, it's bingo what does bingo mean to you so perhaps you have some vintage bingo cards or perhaps you want to use this exact same collection but maybe just use the words b-i-n-g-o <laughs> um, completely up to you uh, if one of the things that i thought was fun too as far as this interpretation for bingo was to bring in another not so not paper element uh bingo element and, and we'll get to that here and you know towards the end of the video but again, how you interpret bingo is completely up to you. I have been loving watching your um, journal pages because we've been doing the art journal page as well. If you've missed it, uh, make sure you guys check that out. But in that one, we select colors more than anything else. Every now and then, yes, you have um, something else that we might incorporate, but that one is a, more of a color challenge. The art panel, which is what we're working on today is more of a theme based challenge so when i give you a theme like we've done before like mermaids or at the beach how you interpret that is completely up to you so when you think bingo what do you think what comes to mind what inspires you maybe you want to collage directly on top of a jumbo bingo card that you might have uh, or perhaps you have some amazing color bingo cards and that's where you want to go with actually my first instinct was to go with um 
or the circus theme because there is a beautiful line from Chow Bella and there's also one from Graphic 45 and I thought oh those reds and blues and those bingo uh, colors that carnival feel um, that you know going to the fairgrounds or going to the fair and um, being at the circus so that was my first instinct until I remember that I had only a little bit left of this collection and I wanted to continue to use it because um, that way you guys also if you purchase this collection from us guess what you've gotten at least five six seven different um, projects that you can use for inspiration on our channel videos in order to create something along with us with this collection as well so yes i decided to go with the more neutral um, tones undertones because it's not going to stay neutral we are going to bring in some color okay now we're not going to keep this flat right this is mixed media it's a panel we can do as much as we want so let's bring in some texture to do that i am using some corrugated um, cardboard this is just a box that i just ripped and tore apart and i've saved some pieces i also have some fabrics some threads um it's not necessarily cheesecloth but it's like it um so anything that's going to give me some fibers uh and some softer frayed uh type of uh, strings is going to be awesome if you have just thread you can always just ball it up roll it up on your fingers and create like little bundles of like a, almost like a nest like a little cocoon and then I also have some jute or twine here which is also great not only for adding additional fibers but in a totally different color and in a very different um, feel or weight to it because of course this is a lot coarser and we are not going to just leave it like that we're going to do some other stuff then we're going to bring in our secret weapon which is the kaiser craft um, wooden boxes these boxes are fabulous we have a lot of well quite a few different uh, sets of these in different themes with the birds and butterflies and um, frames and um, like this one has gears so there's a bunch of different ones take a look at our online store but they come with a lot of wooden pieces which are easy enough to adhere and of course they're lightweight so we don't need like anything super super heavy although i am going to be using my extra forte glue just because i want this to be super permanent but because it is the light wood we could also use something like the art glitter glue or the three in one if we wanted to uh, and of course it's not going to weigh down our art panel ever so much remember that the art panels can be used for book covers or for wall hangings uh, for all kinds of uh, purposes so if you want to um, repurpose your panels then you know you don't want it to be too heavy um, too bulky and the wood is just a perfect way to add that uh, layered look without adding a whole bunch of weight but i love the little uh, wooden boxes and i'll tell you why when you are done with all of the pieces or if you want to dump out the pieces into you know another container or bag well you get this super pretty box that remains it's a wooden box and they're like little mini shadow boxes or vignette boxes um, for the same price so you get the box for free which i absolutely love to reuse and repurpose now let's talk about the extra forte glue because it is one of the best glues out there i am so glad i found it i do love my e6000 but sometimes it is like overkill right extra forte is just as strong the only difference is uh, that extra forte comes out um, it's a little harder to get out of the bottle for me it is now there are two sizes but i've discovered some tricks the smaller size is much easier to to use as far as the bottle is concerned but if you're wondering well maddie you carry extra forte glue you are a you have a store why don't you use the small one well price wise the larger bottle is a better price point so i use the larger one i've been thinking about actually getting the larger one and then continuing to refill my a smaller one so that's a thought process but 
Along the way, I have discovered a few tips which I figure I would pass along in case you're like me and you, you know, you want to maximize your budget and get the bigger one and don't want the struggle. The one thing that I've learned is you want to clean your bottle after every single use. So don't leave glue in the nozzle. So what you do is when you're done, and you're gonna see me do this um, when we're done using it, but I'm giving you the heads up as to what it is that I'm doing. Uh, I go ahead and blow air uh, until there is no glue in the nozzle itself. So if you need to tap down your glue, you tap it down when you're done using it so that all the product falls back down to the bottom. Then you continue to blow air. You squeeze air like a few pumps, maybe three or five times. After that, you grab a paper clip, which is my secret tool. <laughs> it's just a paper clip. Um, and, and it's one of the large ones. And I simply use that paper clip to clean out the nozzle. Then I've replaced my cap also. You don't have to do this, it comes with its own cap. But again, because of my fingers and the way that I struggle, I've replaced it with one of those electrical caps. I guess that's what they're called. Um, basically when you have two wires, and somebody help me out because I don't know what it's called. But when you have two wires and you want to cap it, you have these caps in different colors that, you know, I guess electrical, people use and so you simply um you know screw it onto your wires and that caps off the wire well that's what i use it works really really well for making it easy to open so if you're wondering why my cap looks weird um, and it's yellow and it's got like these little wings on either side that's why i'm simply using one of those electrical caps okay so this by doing that by blowing out the air and then cleaning out um, your nozzle with a paper clip when you're done, you are going to find that the next time you go to use your extra Forte glue, if it's a large one, you are not going to have a whole bunch of clogging issues. So I wanted to just leave that little tip right there for you guys, because if you haven't used extra Forte, you definitely need it. You're going to love it. You're gonna adhere metal, uh, oh, super like thick heavy stuff uh, like I said it's kind of overkill for the wooden embellishments because really they're very very light but I just you know wanted to make sure that I was going to be creating a lot, a lot of layers and I wanted it to be on there permanently especially if I'm going to hang this up on the wall or add it on to the cover of a journal I want it to be on there so that things are not falling off later on right uh, be it, you know, six months or a year from now, or, and especially if it's going to have some use like a book cover. Okay, so hopefully that tip will help you. So as you saw, I am using my silicone spatula. I've just squeezed some of the glue onto my table and uh, onto my mat, excuse me, because both the mat and the spatula are easy cleanup. So it's going to make it much easier for me to clean up afterwards with the extra Forte glue. And then I am using my uh, jute or my twine and uh, simply made a little knot of it so that I have again that little circle and then I am fraying the edges uh, of you know where I've knotted it so it gives it again a different fiber a different um, you know look and color to the composition and texture because the whole idea is continuing to add texture we've got corrugated cardboard, we've got paper, we've got wooden embellishments, we've got fibers, now we've got jute, and we will continue to add some more. And now it's time for cleanup because my hands are all gunky and things are sticking to my fingers. But before that, let's go ahead and, and recap and I'll show you how to clean it up real quick. Uh, all I need is to blow out the air. Like I said, a couple of pumps, make sure there's no glue in the nozzle. Then use my paper clip in order to just go inside of the uh, nozzle or barrel itself and just pull out the little, see, that little bit of um, glue, that's what tends to clog up your glues. So 10 seconds will make 
all the difference the next time you go to use it. Okay, with that said, we're going to use my weird electrical, um, I guess, cap <laughs> to cap this glue. And then a uh, super easy cleanup. Why? Because we are just going to use a wipe to clean up the um, silicone brush. It's just wipe and go. And the same thing with our mat. So two seconds to clean up and we are done. Now this looks really pretty neutral just the way it is, but I am going to bring in some color and I've decided that I'm going to use Magicals. For that, I want to make sure that whatever product, it doesn't have to be mag Magicals, it could have been paint. Uh, I want to make sure that it is well distributed and that it doesn't just sink into my paper or sink into my wood. Remember, this is untreated wood, so it is going to be highly absorbent. If I put product and it's just going to get swallowed up in one place instead of actually flowing. So what I'm going to do is a light coat of clear gesso, not only on the paper, but also on the wooden embellishments. And then using my heated tool, I am going to dry the gesso so that we can move on to the next layer. And the next layer is going to be bringing in, again, additional components all about mixed media. So for that, we are going to bring in some quote unquote plastic because washi tape, it can either be fabric or plastic. And in this case, this one is plastic. Uh, so we're going to bring in another element, break up those um, lines, break up those colors, and add different washies in different directions and in different um, sizes. So, you know, small, large, and I don't like to use my washi so much um, like cut perfect. I like to actually tear up the edges to kind of make it go from fat to skinny and yeah so uh, I love using washi for the purpose of adding additional layers to my projects so if you're like us and you have a whole lot of washi in your stash and you kind of been wondering wow I have all this gorgeous washi and I hardly ever use it what should I do with it well this is what you do with it you bring it into your mixed media pieces and your spectrum art creations art panels so perfect excuse to go ahead and grab two three why not four of the washies that you have in your stash and bring them out to play if you do not have washi in your stash well we have beautiful washi but there are so many amazing ones out there uh, and you definitely want some because they're a lot of fun to work with uh, and they go a long long way because we've had these rolls of washi for quite a number of years if the washi uh the adhesive starts to go on your prod on your roll then remember all you have to do is add glue i usually do add glue to my washi this one was pretty sticky so i wasn't too worried plus we're going to add additional layers on top of it too so we are not done although you do see me using my um marker forte uh, bone folder on it in order to make sure that it's well adhered. Then we're going to bring in a stencil and I'm going to be using my TCW pearl white um, um, stencil butter. Awesome to use not only because of course it's deliciously creamy it actually does look like butter. Oh so pretty. But um, it has a pearlesque finish. Uh, it comes in many different colors. We have like I don't even know maybe 20 different colors available in the store maybe even more but the pearl I, I really like the white because it has a pearlesque finish to it I felt like I needed to bring in some white because I'm going to be adding color you might be thinking well Maddie I see plenty of white but a lot of that white is going to get covered with the color the um, TCW stencil butter will act as a resist so i am going to have white that's going to show through and it's going to have a light pearlesque finish to it which again is going to kind of bring in a little something different right we've got a lot of matte um, 
products on the panel, we want to give us some pizzazz. So we've now got the washi and we've got some stenciling. And I did the um, argyle because I realized I already had stripes, I already had text, I already had numbers, and I had uh, lines and circles. So to, to kind of change it up, even the, um, the gears, the wooden pieces are circles. I wanted to break that up, so I brought in my uh, argyle stencil instead. And now it's time to bring in some color. So I am going to be using Lindy's Magicals. If you've never used them, you're in for a treat. This one is Steampunk Soiree. It comes with Apothecary Azure, Bandolier Brown, Petticoat Plum, Yesteryear Yellow, and Top Hat Teal. If you've never used Magicals, they are simply just that, magical. These little pods have a mixture of pigments uh, and fixatives, and when you add water to them, they simply explode into these color bursts they're amazing super simple to use excellent for any level uh, beginners children anyone can enjoy these so all you need to do is grab a little bit of the powder and sprinkle and i do mean a little a little goes a long long way and i'm just randomly putting it here and there you can't really see it but once i add water look at how it just bursts and explodes into colors and so I'm just going to continue to randomly add color here and there. Uh, I am going to dry a little bit in between each coat, which will help me kind of um, cement it. it. It's not a hundred percent, you know, fast, meaning it's not like once you dry it, it will never move again. But if you do dry it, it will move very, very little, which is great again, because you do want it to blend in with the other colors, but you don't necessarily want to make mud. And in this case, think about it. I am throwing in browns and purples and yellows and blues and teals. So it's a great recipe for making mud if you were to just kind of, you know, go crazy, put tons of powder everywhere and just spray and continue to move back and forth. I'll be honest with you, it takes a lot to make mud. So, so long as you are, um, you know, again, adding a little bit of powder, uh, adding a little bit of water at a time, and you can move it around. Uh, you can even move it around with a brush, which we're gonna do in a bit. Uh, you can, you'll be totally in control, somewhat, because magicals do their own thing. That's what makes them magical. You never know what you're gonna get. When they burst, they'll burst in different uh, colors and in different ways. No two pieces will ever be the same, but there is some control to it. I have done workshops in the past, uh, free workshops where I've uh, shared over, I think it was 20 different ways of using, uh, or 10 different ways of using magicals. And we had a blast working with them and experimenting with them. So again, if you don't own magicals or this set, it's a beautiful one. Please check out our online store because we have tons of magicals including the newer sets that just released this past month or this month um but they are lovely lovely to work with and i'm thinking about doing that workshop in the future so do let me know in the comments is that something you guys would be interested in either redoing for those of you who um, took it the first time or maybe it's brand new to you would you be interested in a free magicals workshop let me know down below Now using one of our brushes from the sets, I am going to bring in the darker color. Um, now this is the Bandolier Brown and I'm gonna use it to create some shadows. It has a bit of a sparkle um, to it, which is lovely. And I am going to be placing it more controlled, more strategic, uh, A, because I don't want the brown to you know, get away from me and go all over the place. And uh, I, so I'm gonna be using my brush and some water. I'm simply dipping my brush into the water and then directly into the actual pod itself and picking up to create some shadows and some rust effects, if you would. 
So um, you can have a little bit more control as I had mentioned by simply using your brush to place the color strategically in the places that you like. And I do this a lot, especially if it's something like a darker color or a very strong color uh, that I'm trying to control, but it is wonderful because not only does it add the shading, right? All those shadows and that rust effect and that contrast, but it's also going to add just a slight bit of sparkle not enough that when you look at the piece you go whoa okay that's got glitter everywhere but it does have a little bit of gold sparkle in between just the right amount so that's what i'm going to continue to do is move it around with some water and move it around with my brush creating the effect that i want in a more controlled manner And I love that. I am happy with the way that it looks. So now I am going to bring in my chipboard because chipboard is not only fabulous for adding dimension, but of course this set has, as I mentioned, a whole bunch of like drawer poles and quotes and just like metal looking pieces like buckles and hinges and clips and all that. So we're gonna bring some of those pieces in here, again, continuing to just work with that line, right? Uh, because it's all coordinated for us, so why not? I am going to just continue to shift around and see which pieces I think might look good. Some are grayish, right? More of that like silver, vintage silver color. Some of them are more bronze. Uh, some of them are a little bit coppery. Uh, so, you know, maybe that gunmetal gray is what I'm thinking. Uh, and so I'm just going to play around trying to work with the colors that I have. Remember, we have browns, we've got blues, we had gray on our paper, we had some tans, uh, we've got some yellow, so we've got a little bit of that golden coppery, we've got some rust, rusty looking stuff. Um, Again, all just done with just wooden magicals. So super fun way to create that uh, metallic or rusted patina effect using our yellows with the bit of an orange to them and our blues and teals. So I am just going to play around. You guys go ahead and play around with your uh, ephemera or chipboard as well. And this is one of the reasons why I, you guys see me use a lot of chipboard in my pieces. I used to always prefer the ephemera, which I still love, don't get me wrong, for things like ATCs and tags and that kind of thing. I use a lot of um, paper ephemera. But for adding volume, for adding dimension without, again, adding a whole lot of weight or too much bulk, the chipboard elements are fantastic.
Okay, I think we found the perfect layout. I like it. So let's bring in the rub-ons and figure that out before we adhere the chipboard pieces. I've got um, a fascination with numbers and alphabet, of course, but as I can see, I have a lot of letters already and numbers. I've got plenty of text. So I think we're going to skip the letters and the numbers. See, I've got text everywhere. So I am going to instead focus on my butterflies, dragonflies, and bee set. It does have some hearts and it does have some text, uh, but I don't want to choose anything too big and overpowering. I don't want it to be necessarily necessarily a focal point. I just want it to be an addition, something kind of small, a little une unexpected, just here or there. And you know I'm going to bring in those bees because I'm in love with them. Okay. So I think we've got a game plan. So we're going to commit to adhering our chipboard down. We're going to be adding that little corner at the bottom. We're going to be adding that cool, you know, buckle at the top. And then we're going to be adding that um, little uh, placard with the word pretty on it. Now those are separate pieces. So you can actually pop out just the word pretty and use the frame individually. Uh, or vice versa. So I want it to be one solid piece so that it doesn't fall apart on me. So to do that, again, because I'm not mounting it onto a uh, flat surface, right? So in order to do that, I'm just going to bring something to first mount it onto. So it's adhered onto this corrugated piece. Again, super fun, yet another layer of texture. I simply added a bit of that corrugated cardboard. Uh, that I had and now that's kind of kept it all as one piece and then I can adhere that on to our lovely art panel and it gives us yet another layer of texture and the unexpected kind of peeking out on uh, those corners which is the corrugated okay once we are happy with that which I am we are now going to bring in those rub-ons Oh, almost forgot the little clip there. <laughs> I kind of left it loosey goosey. So let me go ahead and adhere that first onto my bingo chip at the top. So it looks like it's holding on to the bingo card. And we can bring in the uh, beautiful rub ons. So again, I oh, don't want it to be a focal point, but I do want to have a little butterfly and I do want to have a little bee. So that's exactly what I'm going to pick. If you've never used rub super easy. Again, one of those um, beginner <laughs> concepts, you just simply stick it on and rub it on with a stick and it transfers. The nice thing is that they are translucent or semi-translucent. So it's like stamping without the stamp. And of course, you can place it anywhere. Uh, they'll transfer onto anything. So all you do is rub with your stick and it's going to transfer that image exactly where you want it. We just did a, an amazing class from 49 and Market in the Spectrum Art Creations Academy where we used a lot of rub-ons. And boy, do they just make a big, big difference in projects. So if you are not part of the Academy uh, and you want to be or you want to find out more, I am going to leave a link at the end of this video, so stay tuned, uh, for you to click on and go find out more about how to join the Academy. But uh, rub-ons are just amazingly fun and definitely a plus. And now we've got a little butterfly and a bee just kind of unexpected, just hanging out. I want to now move on to my next layer. And this is what I was talking about, that it's kind of a little bit the unexpected, but it's part of mixed media. I love using bingo chips in my projects. You'll see them throughout all the time. Well, what could be better? Bingo is the theme, so bingo chips it is. And I have both um, clear sets and I have, of course, the color sets as well. And I'm just playing around to see what colors I like and where I like to tuck them in. But that is the beauty of mixed media, being able to use all kinds of different elements. Now, to adhere this, I'm going to be using my Cosmic Shimmer Acrylic Glue, which is fabulous for anything like acetate, anything uh, plastic. Uh, it dries clear completely, so even though it looks white when I apply it to the bingo chip, 
once it dries you will not be able to see the adhesive at all and it's fabulous for anything acrylic anything plastic so it's my go-to for all of my acetate it is my go-to for anything that is plastic as if i'm doing any windows or anything like that this is the glue that i love to use as well as for my bingo chips okay now we were talking about mixed media if you notice so far we've now got wood plastic paper fabric uh metal we actually have real metal which is the uh paper clip so we've blended all of these elements into one cohesive piece and that is the magic and the fun of mixed media is to add everything from paper clips to washi to stencil butter to rub-ons chipboard wood corrugated cardboard you name it we've done it but we're gonna go ahead and finish this off by using this amazing stamp set it has all of these great borders or stitches so it's a great way not to have to break out your sewing machine <laughs> which i'm all for i do like of course to use the sewing machine uh, because it does bring it another element of course uh, by adding thread and it just looks special but on something like this it's not going to be possible at least not for me because this is extremely extremely thick at this point we've got so many layers of so many things that this would be a disaster for my sewing machine i'm not sure if you have a different sewing machine but mine would not be able to handle this without probably damaging the housing or the needle plus i am not the best at using my sewing machine so i am just going to create that same look but with a stamp so Again, and I'm gonna mix and match because uh, it comes with a bunch of different ones. Uh, let me count them. It comes with 13 different um, stitches or borders, which awesome, right? Because we can mix and match to our heart's content. Uh, of course, to clean off my stamps, all I do is stamp them on this scratch piece of paper. And I'm gonna continue to layer. I almost forgot to mention that I am using my favorite ink pad you guys all know what it is it's the graphic 45 hybrid inks love love these stamps and the black is just amazing if you're not familiar with the hybrid inks uh, I will tell you that they are amazing because they're a hybrid you can use it with anything whether it's your Copic markers watercolors uh, mixed media magicals uh, anything anything you want and they are always the perfect ink because they will not smudge they will not run they are awesome now just remember that if you are going to start playing with all kinds of stuff either let it dry or heat set it right it does have a little bit uh longer of a dry time because it is a hybrid uh, but once it's dried it's set it's not going anywhere okay so i'm just going to continue to have fun and mix and match my stamps And with the border stamping done, all that is left is for me to use my black hybrid ink to distress my edges, and we are done. The art panel is done. What do you guys think? I hope you like it. I hope you've walked away with at least some ideas and inspiration. Uh, more importantly, I like to hear from you guys. Did you like this process? It, or do you prefer the faster more condensed version where I just kind of play some music and let you guys watch the process do let me know in the comments because that is how I'm going to be bringing you the future content once again if there's anything that you'd like from the video or anything else we have thousands of products available for you we have two Etsy stores spectrumartcreations.com and the Etsy store Spectrum Art Creations. Of course, we also have our live sales here on YouTube. So make sure you join us for those because you can buy product live, see product live and chat live. Also make sure you follow us on Instagram if you are on IG. And of course that you join our Facebook group if you haven't already done so, because it sure is a lot of fun to be able to see all the other crafters on there and their creations ask questions and share your makes once again if you are not part of spectrum art creations academy 
we hope that you will look into it and of course join us because that way you can get more exclusive videos classes workshops and lives plus bunch of other extra little perks there as well so do look into that for one flat fee you can actually enjoy all of those benefits on a monthly basis if you are new and have not subscribed to our channel please do so for all of these reasons and so much more thank you so much for joining us today in the studio and I am going to leave an extra video here as well as the Academy information so that you can go check out some other inspiration ideas as well. See you guys all soon. Bye.